So guys, I'm sorry I haven't posted a video the last couple of days. We've been really busy with uh, brush clearing and some burning and um, just doing a lot of, a, lot of, a lot of chores around the house that uh, probably should have taken you guys along those journeys, but um, just didn't think to break the camera out. So uh, last night I cleared a bunch of brush. I was planning on burning it uh, someday this week, but I knew that storms were coming in. Uh, a little later this week and the wind has really picked up the last couple of days so I haven't been able to to burn any of my brush piles so they're just they're sitting waiting for for me to catch them on fire but tonight uh, I got a couple of really cool things uh, a friend of mine dropped something off at work uh, today thought that I could I could really get some use out of it I think it's a tool that that I'll get to to, to use a lot um, he knows how much brush I clear out here, and he said, hey, I'm gonna bring you a tool that I think will really help help you out. It was my grandfather's, so um, he dropped that off today at work. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and show that to you guys, and then uh, we're, we're probably gonna do a, a little restoration uh, on that. I uh, did see um, a couple of little spots that need to be repaired on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and take a look at those. So like I said, a friend of mine brought me a, a brush ax. Uh, it's a, it's a hooked axe, really, really nice and heavy. It's got some heft to it, some weight. Uh, and then this curved edge right here is a sharpened blade. So um, essentially you use it like an axe, but with much, much smaller, uh, finer debris uh, to cut that down or, or thinner, thinner branches, uh, small trees, saplings, things like that. Um, I do know that this thing will go through a, a one inch sapling fairly easily uh, when it's nice and sharp. We're gonna go ahead and put a really good edge on that because uh, what you'll find a lot of times is is an axe or a tool like this that's got a dull edge you end up having to work harder with it and not only is that harder on the body but it's also harder on the tool itself um, you, you you might see a lot of these little chips and nicks in the edge of the blade and that's from just over swinging over striking the other thing that it can do is break the handle uh, this is a really nice hickory handle i don't quite like the profile on it. Um, I might slim down uh, the, the front edge a little bit so, so it fits in the hand a little bit better. Um, I don't have the biggest hands in the world, but um, this is, it just feels a little. So what we want to do is, is, is we want to profile down this handle a little better. We want to put a good blade, a good edge on this blade. I, I may even uh, kind of give this a, a little bit of a, a muriatic acid bath. Uh, to take off some of this surface rust. Um, I was thinking about just laying it in a bath of, of muriatic acid and water, just a nice little solution. But after looking at it, I don't think it's gonna need to soak like that. I think I should be able to just sponge it on or use a rag uh, to, to, to put that on and I won't have to take the blade off the handle. So that's gonna save me a little bit of time, a little bit of work. Um, I do wanna go ahead and put some oil on this handle. Uh, because it's such a nice hickory handle, um, I want to I want to see if I can't get quite a few more years out of it. So to do that, I'm going to have to condition it, put some oil on it, um, and and make it nice. So the other thing that I picked up, uh, we did a big project at work that required a couple of um, couple of 55 gallon drums. So uh, I picked those up, I rinsed them out. Um, they had a, a fiberglass resin in them, um, but I picked those up. They're going to be great for things uh, like. A, uh, a barrel stove, a wood burning stove. Uh, they could use. You, we could use them for compost pits, uh, burn barrels. Uh, if we could get all of them really, really clean. One of them has the ring style lid, but the other one is just a two inch spigot that we could put some sort of hand pump on. We could. We could use it for detergents or fuels or watering our garden or or just about anything. So um, I'm going to pull those out of the back of the truck. We'll get those um, cleaned out and air drying. So. So see here we got it big empty drum um, probably still yeah it's got a little bit of fiberglass resin in it but uh, that should dry and we could use some sort of uh, detergent or some sort of chemical to to break that all down we may just wipe it out um, that might be the best best bet is to just wipe that out let it dry um, that fiberglass resin like I said it, it's it's gonna dry so hard that we could put rainwater or something like that in the barrel and it's not going to this is a sealed top version, and like I said, it comes with a two inch hole that we could put a hand pump or something like that in. Uh, it comes with a little vent cap. Um, these are really good drums, like I said, you can use them for anything. This one is gonna be more of storing liquids, or, or I could even cut this one into that wood burning stove. Like I said, they make a couple of really neat little kits for about 50 bucks, you cut your own hole, you post your legs on this thing, you got a wood burning stove. 
Uh, this one with the bigger lid is going to be more of a multi-purpose uh, container that I can use, again, for burning trash or making compost, collecting rainwater, all sorts of cool stuff. Now that I've got some WD-40 on the, on the blade, I can see that it's stamped Kelly Axe and Tool Company, Charleston, West Virginia. So, um, you know, if anybody knows anything about bush axes and, and trailblazing and clearing land, it's those West Virginians. Uh, so, looking at the, uh, the steel on this thing, I don't even think I need to soak it in a muriatic acid bath like I was going to do. So, I think what I'm going to do is just put a little WD-40 on it, um, get my grinding disc out, or my, uh, my polishing wheel, um, and, and go to town on this thing, get it, get it nice and clean. So this, this disc is pretty worn down, so I'm going to try that first. I'm going to um, hit that blade with this guy first, and then we'll see, uh, see what kind of effects we get. We've got a nice, nice, uh, nice uh, surface on this. We knocked all the rust off. The, the, the blade itself looks like it's in really good shape. I, um, I am going to take my file and I'm going to put a really good sharp edge on this. Um, I'm going to see if we can't make this thing uh, a much, much easier tool to use when we're cutting that brush. So I'll go ahead and put it in my vise. All right, so we've got all the rust knocked off of this thing. Now I'm going to take my file and I'm going to get rid of some of the uh, the bad spots on this. And we're only going to scrape one direction. So now I'm going to get my little puck, two-sided puck. You've got a coarse grit on one side, and you've got a finer grit on the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and polish this, uh, this uh, blade, get, get us a nice razor-sharp edge. I like to put a little three-in-one oil on the, the puck. That way it'll take all the shavings away. Just a few drops. So it seems relatively sharp. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sand down the handle and then I'm going to take it out here and, and chop on a couple of little, little uh, bushes and see if it, uh, if it is any better than when I first got it. All right, so we've got a couple of small trees over here that range anywhere from uh, about an inch to an inch and a half. I'm going to chop through one or two of these things and see how well this thing works. I know you guys are probably going to get on to me because I'm not wearing the right protective gear, but I'm just going just gonna to test this thing out. Having never used one of these, you know, it's, it's kind of tough to tell um, how well I'm going to like it, how, how easy this thing is to use. Uh, probably need to change my technique 
uh, or, or work on it um, to, to figure out the best way to use this thing. But the initial impression is I don't like it. Um, it's, it's heavy, it's not very well balanced. I can throw some two stroke uh, fuel in the weed eater brush cutter contraption I've got and I can do five times as much work in roughly half the time. So um, again, first, first impression, I'm, I'm not sold on this. So a little update on the chickies. We've still got six of these new little guys. Uh, we've got our uh, two little barred rocks. There's, there's a barred rock there. One of our little barred rocks. And then over here, we've got our silver laced wine dope. And then an Americana. And we've actually got two Americanas. We've got Fatty Oprah. And I don't know the other one's name. What's that other Americana's name? Lila. Lila? Is that it? No. Um, something else. So, those are our new little chickies. They've, uh, they've grown up quite a bit. We've actually moved them into this stall uh, so mm -hmm. that they, uh, have they can have a little bit more room to, to move around and get used to being out here. And then in a couple of weeks, we will uh, we'll move them over to... Uh, the stall with the big with the big hens. So we've got our. Uh, and the roosters. Do we have a pan of food over there, guys? Yeah. We got clean water in there. No food. Okay. Food. Oh, the food's in the back of the truck, isn't it? Do you want some food? Oh, no. Um, the pan is out there. Baggy, baggy. Do you want food? Yes or no? Baggy said yes. 